Hi, and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by internal energy. You should then be able to describe what happens when a material changes state. We've already looked at the particles in solids, liquids, and gases. Remember that the particles in a solid do not move from place to place, but they do vibrate. Particles in a liquid can move around each other, and particles in a gas move extremely rapidly. So what this means is that all of these particles have got kinetic energy. Now particles also have potential energy. Remember that particles have got forces between them, which are called intermolecular forces. And if they're a molecule, then they also contain chemical bonds. Together, these give the particles potential energy. Now the internal energy is the energy stored in a system by the particles. It's the total kinetic energy and potential energy of all the particles, and that includes atoms and molecules that make up a system. Now, please don't get bogged down by the idea of internal energy. I would recommend, though, that you learn the definition. Okay, now internal energy is really important during changes of state. If we heat a solid, we increase the internal energy. At some point, the solid can turn into a liquid, and we call this melting. If we continue to heat the liquid, Again, we continue to increase the internal energy, and at some point, the liquid will turn to a gas. We call this boiling. Now, if we cool the gas down again, then we reduce the internal energy. At some point, the gas turns back to a liquid, and we call that condensation. And if we cool the liquid down further, then we reduce the internal energy even more, and eventually the liquid turns to a solid, and we call that freezing. Now, there are a few other points that we need to look at. Sometimes a solid can turn directly to a gas. For example, carbon dioxide does that at room temperature and pressure. Scientists call that sublimation, and I'm showing that here. Secondly, remember that when changes of state take place, mass is always conserved. We're not adding or taking away any particles. And lastly, changes of state are physical changes, not chemical changes. That means that if we reverse the change, the material recovers its original properties. So, for example, if we melt ice to water and then refreeze the water, the ice we make is exactly the same as the ice was at the start. Now, there is one final point which we need to look at, which is evaporation. Now, evaporation is when a liquid turns to a gas, but only on the surface of a liquid. In this case, only the particles on the surface have enough energy to turn into a gas. Remember that you'll find plenty of questions on internal energy and changes of state in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by internal energy. You should then be able to describe what happens when a material changes state.